what's going on welcome to another episode of ask tanya this is the segment where you guys can ask me your questions and i will answer them from a cosmetic chemist perspective we are on episode number five and if you would like to get your questions featured in the upcoming ask tanya video definitely go to the ask tanya tab on my website i'll post a link below for you to go ahead and submit your question and for me to answer it in an upcoming video and you guys know i don't waste any time let's go ahead and get to the first question which happens to be from Miss Giselle. Giselle says, hi Tanya, thanks for this platform. First of all, your tips on hair care nightly and oiling my scalp every two or three days have made a tremendous difference. Uh, and her question is, can you please advise on how to use ACV rinse and does the brand matter? Giselle, that is a great question. And for those who may not know, ACV stands for apple cider vinegar rinses. And apple cider vinegar is a great way to regulate the pH of our hair and our scalp, which really is the foundation of healthy hair and healthy scalp. On top of that, ACV is a great way to clarify the hair and the scalp without stripping too much from the hair and the scalp. So it's a great way to really get your curls popping, shinier and softer, including cleansing the hair as well. Now, as far as how to use it, definitely on your wash day, you wanna do it in between your shampoo and conditioner. So when you shampoo your hair, when your hair is freshly cleansed, scalp is clean, go ahead and do your rinse right there before you condition your hair. And once you put this rinse on your hair, you're gonna massage into your scalp for a few minutes and then rinse it off proceed to your conditioner, that's it. I have a really good recipe in the Practical Solutions for Natural Hair. If you do not have that ebook, definitely check it out to get my recipe. So that is pretty much how I recommend doing that. And you can do this like once a month or as often as your hair or scalp needs it. And as far as the brand goes that I recommend, check out Braggs. Braggs makes high quality ACV all natural organic outside of vinegar. You can get it pretty much anywhere, your local grocery store or Amazon. Okay, and the next question is from Miss Kim. Kim says, how often should we use pumpkin seed oil for our hair follicles in a one week period? By the way, I love the deep fill pumpkin seed oil and I love it, but I don't wanna overdo it, thanks. Great question, Kim. So when it comes to pumpkin seed oil, it is a carrier oil. And carrier oils tend to be the fatty oil or the fatty part of a seed, a nut, or a kernel. Now, because it's a fatty oil, it is, for the most part, pretty flexible. Like, we can use it more often than other things. So you have some people who may do pumpkin seed scalp massages every night. So, and then you have others who do it every two to three days. So I would say start off with three times a week and see how your scalp responds to that. If you want to start off doing it daily, you can too, but that may be too much or make your scalp too oily. So you kind of have to play around with it a little bit, but you won't really overdo it in a sense. Now on the flip side, if you, are allergic to pumpkin seed oil, then that's a different story. But in this case, it sounds like you're not allergic to it, which is great. So you can get away with using it on a daily basis or three times a week. So I would say fluctuate between there, see how your hair and scalp responds, and then proceed with that. Okay, the next question is from Lori. And Lori says, I am a road cyclist living between Jamaica and Spain who spends hours upon hours outside training in the sun. Granted, I wear a helmet that probably blocks some of the sun's rays, but combined with the rays that do make it through in the sweat from exercise, how detrimental how detrimental is this on my scalp's health? I am sure that I cleanse my scalp regularly and after each bike ride, I usually spritz my scalp with Ayurvedic herbal tea followed with a lightweight oil. What are your thoughts on this regimen? I love this question, Lori, because I feel like sunscreen and sun protection is becoming more of a trend now, especially when it comes to our hair and our scalp. And honestly, what you're doing right now sounds really good. Like I see no red flags with what you're doing. Number one, you're spritzing your scalp with an Ayurvedic herbal tea. A lot of Ayurvedic herbs tend to be very anti-inflammatory and they also tend to be antioxidants, which is the combination what you want when it comes to protecting your scalp and your hair from the sun. So you already are doing great there. And then on top of that, you are using a lightweight oil, which is gonna be great for blocking in that moisture. And a lot of oils do tend to have antioxidants within them naturally. Now, as far as lightweight oils that I, I would recommend when it comes to protecting from the sun, jojoba oil, sweet almond oil, almond oil, avocado oil, olive oil, just to name a few, are known for being natural sunscreens. So if 
assuming one of those are the ones that I mentioned, that's great. But if not, I would check out one of those carrier oils to apply to your scalp along with your herbal spray. But outside of that, you're doing a great job. Okay, the next question is from Miss Gabby, and Gabby says, Hi, Tanya. Ever since I was little, the middle of my hair was always shorter than the other sections of my hair. My mom's hair is the same way, too. I'm sure genetics plays a part. The middle also has a tighter curl pattern than the rest of my hair. Even now that I take better care of my hair than I did back then, the middle still struggles. I pre poo often in deep conditioning, but I still have a hard time growing the middle of my hair. I also take vitamin D supplements and use rosemary oil on my scalp. Do you have any advice on hair to retain length for the middle of my hair other than paying attention to my moisture cycle? Yes, so outside of like your moisture cycle and you doing your vitamin D supplements, I would be mindful of how you're styling in that area because you have a tighter curl pattern there that means it's even more fragile. So when you are styling your hair, when you're combing your hair, when you're brushing your hair, you really got to baby that section of your hair. Like you want to baby all parts of your hair, but definitely when it comes to that middle part, because the, 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 the pattern is so much more tighter, you got to give it extra TLC. And that's just the nature of our hair. And that's one of the reasons why our hair is prone to dryness and breakage because of our curl pattern. And a lot of times women who have 4C hair, you know, they have a really hard time retaining that moisture and retaining that length because of how tight the curl pattern is. So it's just more so being able to work with the pattern and being very careful with the pattern when it comes to how you deal with it on a daily basis. Outside of that, moisture retention will always be key. Deep conditioning, you're doing that already, so stick with that. The biggest thing, like I said, I would say, be mindful of how you're handling that section because how you're handling it could be causing a breakage and the lack of lip retention that you're seeing. So I would say be mindful of that. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Deborah. Deborah says, hi, Tanya. First of all, thank you so much for sharing so much knowledge and wisdom with us all. Since I've been following your advice since February 2023, my hair is getting healthier and I'm retaining length. I've also noticed brand new hair growing in all around my head, meaning it's gonna get thicker. I'm so happy. However, because that new hair is of course way shorter than the rest, it keeps tangling around the longer strands. I figured I need to be extra gentle with handling such detangling my hair, but I was just wondering whether you whether you've experienced that as well, and if you could have any other advice you could share. Thanks in advance. Stay blessed. So first of all, Deborah, congratulations on the result that you are seeing. I love to hear that. Now, as far as to answer your question, you low-key answered the question because you said I figured I need to be extra gentle when handling such detangling my hair. That's the answer. So you got it. You absolutely have it because you have those two different textures. You want to be very cautious. You want to take your time and be patient when you are detangling your hair. And on top of that, just make sure that you are staying on top of moisturizing your hair and sealing with an oil because that's going to create a nice coating on the cuticle so that even when those short hair strands rub against, the long strands, they won't get tangled up amongst each other. So as long as you are being careful with how you handle and comb your hair and keeping up with that moisture and that sealing, it's gonna take time for that short hair to grow out, but you will see a difference. So keep doing what you're doing, take your time and keep me posted. Okay, the last question is from Miss Pamela and Miss Pamela says, are some people sensitive to pumpkin seed oil? Can I mix it with something to calm down the itching? So as far as like people being sensitive to pumpkin seed oil, there's always a possibility that someone is allergic or just has a very sensitive scalp to certain carrier oils. So yes, that is a possibility. As far as like um, calming down the itching, if you are noticing itching with pumpkin seed oil, then that may not be the oil for you, but if your scalp is just naturally itchy and you just wanna make an oil that has pumpkin seed oil within it to help to calm down itching on an already itchy scalp, you can add like tea tree oil or peppermint oil, just a few drops to that mixture to help to minimize the itching. But if you are experiencing pumpkin seed oil by itself causing your scalp to itch, 
that you may be allergic and your scalp may not be compatible with pumpkin seed oil. So hopefully that helps. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this Ask Tanya video, episode five. Once again, to get your questions answered in the upcoming Ask Tanya video, be sure to submit your questions at the link below. And if you want to learn more about your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective, check out these curly chemistry resources right here. My best advice for our hair ingredients, techniques, and solutions are found in these eBooks. So definitely check them out if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested in starting a hair care line, no matter where you are in the world, I would love to connect with you one-on-one -on -one to help you bring your ideas to fruition. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.